Pond Boss Fish Habitat. Three, two. Hey, Mr. Pond Boss, tell me what to do to make all my Lunker Lake dreams come true. Chico, that's a catchy little ditty, isn't it? He really is. <laughs> I like that. We got to get him on film. You that's know what? what he, yeah, he would be really, really good. That'd be cool. He would be fun. Let's talk today, uh, this podcast, about uh, Habitat for Fish. Because I think that's one of those commonly misunderstood concepts where people think about part of it, but then again, they don't know what they don't know. I don't know what I don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Y'all don't know what you don't know. So fish habitat is one of those big things because underwater, it's a mystery. You can't see it. You know, if you're managing for deer, you can go out in the field. You can see and build and create food plots. Yeah. You know, you can see the edge cover. Mm -hmm. You can see the bedding areas. You know what's great deer habitat, but underwater, if you can't see it, how do you know what it is? So what I'm going to tell everybody is to look at habitat underwater for fish like you look at a community. You know, in the neighborhood where a lot of folks live, there's the schools, there's parks, there's shopping, there's green belts, there's houses, places to live. You know, there's restaurants to go eat. That builds a community. You know, and so underwater, you want to do the same concept. And underwater, it all starts with spawning areas. So if you know the different species of fish that you're going to manage for, then you can figure out the kind of spawning areas first. Greetings, Bob Lusk here, editor of Pond Boss Magazine and longtime fisheries biologist. Welcome to the Pond Boss Podcast Series. Got some great topics lined up for you. Glad you're coming along. We are brought to you by Purina Mills, makers of Aquamax Fish Foods, Texas Hunter Products, makers of fantastic fish feeders and other hunting products, Easy Docs, and HuntBirdDog.com. We're glad you're here. Let's go have some fun together and get our learning curve up. Let's just, just make it real simple. We'll start off with bluegill spawning beds. Bluegill love to spawn in fairly shallow water. I don't like, I, I, I've seen them spawn in six or eight inches of water but then get picked off by predators that shallow. So what I tell folks is to build ledges underwater. Now this, these are a brand new, I love designing brand new lakes and ponds. That's one of my favorite things to do now, Chico, mm -hmm. is to build and help people coach people up, consult with them so they can do a great job to build the underwater habitat for a pond or a lake. And it all starts with spawning beds. So we'll take, uh, I'll have them build, have the bulldozer or a skid steer <coughs> build <coughs> like a little shelf Put down some geotech cloth, some shade cloth, heavy duty shade cloth. Put half inch, three eighths to half inch pea gravel on top of that shade cloth, about four inches thick. How big do you make it? About as big as the hood of a pickup truck. Doesn't have to be any bigger than a pickup mm -hmm. truck. How many do you need? Three to five per acre of, of pond. Where do you put them? Around the perimeter. You know, unless you've got some shallow islands in the middle or, you know, some shelves out in the middle of the lake. Most of these are going to be perimeter structures. And then what you got to think about is what can you do to support the different species of fish that you want and all size classes of those fish. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? I do. So it's, it's like you're going to have, if it's a bass bluegill lake, you're going to have bass, you're going to have bluegills. But you're also going to start the lake with fathead minnows. And at some point, you're probably going to be stocking threadfin shad in the south or some native minnows in the Midwest or north. Maybe some crawfish that are native to your part of the country. So you need to be thinking about all the different substrates that those little bitty fish need and then how those other fish spawn. Mm -hmm. So threadfin shad, for example, they like to stick their eggs on grass. So if you've got a few shallow areas where vegetation can grow underwater, aquatic plants like bushy pondweed or American pondweed, shad will stick their eggs on that vegetation. So it all starts with spawning. And then once those eggs hatch, then what? You know, because when a little egg, a baby bluegill, for example, when it's first hatched, 12,000 make one pound. Wow. That's how many. They're little bitty fish. They're about like that. Looks, it's, looks like uh, two little dark eyes and yeah. a squiggly little yeah. tail. Well, if those fish don't have a place to eat, 
in a hide. place to hide, yeah. immediately they're going to get decimated. Yeah. Something good. Insects will eat newly hatched fish. Wow. Dragonfly larvae feast on oh, newly hatched oh, sure. fish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and so having places next to the spawning beds that have some dense structure like brush piles or rock piles or riprap or weed beds, that's part of the community. So you got to have those things in order to have a successful fishery. And then as the fish grow up and get bigger, the ones that don't get eaten that are headed toward adulthood, you got to have the right kind of habitat for them. You know, like uh, some folks like to use Christmas trees. I'm not a giant fan of Christmas trees, but I also like to use what we've got. Yeah. You know, Christmas trees don't last very long underwater. The needles fall off within about six months and the little twigs are gone within about mm, 18 months. And by year five, all you got left are the big branches yeah. in the trunk of the tree. And that's about it, you know, but if you've got some kind of dense structure, you can buy artificial structure, go to pondboss.com, look in the resource guide, you know, click on the resource guide. You'll find companies that sell different types of artificial structure. You know, there's a, uh, Mossback, uh, American Fish Tree, mm -hmm. Texas Angler Products. That's a, a division of Texas Hunter Products, you know. And so there's companies out there that, that do that. But if you've got rocks, make rock piles, yeah. shape them like a pyramid. We've seen pretty cool, creative stuff. We have seen some real cool stuff. And actually, what we'll do is I've got some short videos that we can plug in with our podcasts that we can show what some of that stuff really looks like. So I don't know if we'll build it into this podcast or how we'll do that, but I've got a couple of short videos that we can plug in and some, uh, some pictures. Actually, you know what? Here's some pictures. We'll plug some pictures in right here in this podcast okay. so here people you can see yeah. those. Okay, yeah. you can we've, do that, can't you? We've got them. Yep. Okay. I know right. the ones you want to. <laughs> yep. And so as we talk about the different species of fish, we got to understand their life cycles in order to provide their the kind of habitat that they need. So you need to know what red ear sunfish need, largemouth bass, you know, bluegill, um, golden shiners if you use those. So uh, I designed a lake for a guy near Kansas City a few years ago. He does not want crappie in that lake. Well, it's a pretty big lake, you know, it's 60 plus acres. So he had several really big trees that were going to be in the basin of the lake. And I tried to convince him to stand those up in the main body of the lake in water that's pretty deep. He said, I don't want to do that. And I said, yeah, you do. So he said, tell me why. I said, so crappie will have a place to congregate. He said, I'm not stalking Ooh, crappie. Yeah, that was the yeah. negative. Yeah, but you know what? Mm -hmm. What if they show up? Yeah, I mean, what, birds, anything? I mean, there's a lot of Well, fish migrate. You know, when, yeah. when you finally get those heavy rains and, yeah. and all these waterways connect, fish migrate. And you also never know when a, when a wink, wink, friendly neighbor wants to help you out. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and bucket biology does, does to you. Sure. You know, bring a bucket full of something, pours it in your lake. That, you know, and you can't unpickle that pickle. Mm -hmm. So what I had him do was put some of that, put some really good crappie attracting habitat in the lake. That way, if he does get crappie in there, they're attracted to that more so and away from the other habitat that he designed in there for his bass, for yeah. his bluegills, for his walleye, you know, and his smallmouth bass. I like it. Give them a welcome home. That's it. So if they show up, they've got a place that they can go, and hopefully they'll congregate there, which part of the year they will, and then he can go catch them if and when they do show up. So that was kind of a preventive preventive deal. So here's the bottom line. When you're designing a pond, you need habitat and you need habitat, not only for the species of fish that you want to catch. Like I can't tell you how many lakes I've looked at where the landowner dialed in on all the fantastic big bass habitat. Yeah. You know, where he had the right lay downs and mm -hmm. some big rocks here and a ledge over here and a crate channel, but zero thought to the small fish that he needs to protect long enough so they can become a significant snack. Or they put it so far away. Yeah, they, like they, down in the very bottom of the lake with right. nothing around the perimeter right. in the littoral zone. Mm -hmm. That's where all the productivity is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So like a while ago when I said 12,000 bluegill per pound when they first come off the bed, if you can keep bluegills alive for 45 days, they're 30 per pound. 
Now they're significant bait fish, good nuggets, you know, for a 10, 11, 12 inch, 13 inch, 14 inch bass. Mm -hmm. So doing what you can do to protect those fish, that's great. So now, you know, we're not doing a deep dive into this. So if you really want more information, we've got some fantastic videos at the Institute of Higher Pondology at pondboss.com. You can find that either at pondboss.com where there's a link or you can go to pondboss.teachable.com. Now that's a pay-per-view deal. That's where we've got six, <coughs> six different modules and you can pick the modules you want or we'll bundle them all for you. Now that's for folks that are a little bit more serious about and getting ready to spend some money on their fishery. So there's a little taste of habitat. Give that some thought and then as you're uh, building your program, put it to work. Spend some time at uh, palmboss.com. Send me an email at info at palmboss.com. And hey, listen, really appreciate you guys tuning in, listening in, and uh, checking this out. Thanks for listening and watching. We'll talk to you soon. Wow, that was pretty fun, huh? I'm so glad that you joined us. Say, if you're looking for more information, I want you to head over to palmboss.com. We've got all kinds of cool information and been there forever. It's got some of the best articles, topics, got uh, Ask the Boss discussion forum. And be sure to check out the Institute of Higher Pondology online as well. And subscribe to Palm Boss Magazine. That's what fuels the economy of what we're doing to help us put these shows on. So until next time, we'll see you then. Hey, Mr. Palm Boss, tell me what to do to make all my Lunker Lake dreams come true.